FM News Talk 97.1. On Demand Audio. All right, so, you know, the next thing we're going to do um, is we're going to talk to Sunny Johnson. Um, and she is a firecracker of another, you know, description like there you you're if you've never heard sunny she's been on my program before but if you're new to the program and you haven't heard her you're in for a treat so while we're getting to that and and if you want to call in 866-455-9797 um look there's there's no easy way to get through this there's no easy way to talk about the videos that we saw because it usually with these offers are involved shootings it's there's a video but the, the ones from last week were gut-wrenching, painful, and difficult to watch. And it took some time to get through watching them, like just get over what we saw. All right, we're going to go to Sunny now. And this is just a continuation of the same conversation because we're going we're gonna to work our way through this. Hey, Sunny, welcome to the show. Oh, thank you so much for having me on. You know what? Um, so I'm holding you over at the top. You're, you're with me on that? Can we? Yeah, I'm fine. Okay, awesome. So we had a shooting here in Baldwin. Um, where a police officer pulled over uh, someone who was exceeding the speed limit by a lot in a little municipality called Baldwin. And it's a place that hasn't had a shooting in it since 1987. Uh, it's it's a majority white suburb. It's like two miles away from where I live. And so it's a very peaceful, kind of sleepy little town. And then you have this guy get out of the car and shoot this officer in the back three times. And so he's in critical condition fighting for his life, and people are really upset about that. And that was right on the heels of the attack in Dallas. So how do we get past what we're all feeling right now, which is, every like like Kira said, everybody's mad. Yeah, and but that's by design. And over the last uh, about five years now, I have especially starting with Trayvon Martin, I learned not to jump in the single stories because once you jump into the single stories, you kind of get on what side you're on and Mm -hmm. everybody stays there. And then both sides use it against the other, whether they were correct. Like if I, um, with Baltimore, with the officers being exonerated. Now, the right uses it as, see, we told you so, where if one of the officers would have been found guilty, the left would have said, see, this is our victory. It's like we, when we get caught in the little minutia, we don't see the big picture. So the thing that I try to stick on is the big picture. And I try not to speak on race directly, but I speak on race in context. So with that being said, I'm a conservative, and I travel around the country talking about conservative thought. And I also advocate for my community because what does conservatism serve me if it doesn't serve to better my community? So everything that I do, I make sure I keep it in the mind frame that the message needs to be in the black community, not just us conservatives talking about the black community. So that's kind of where I set everything. And when the shootings of the first two black men happened, um, sadly to say, I didn't feel. Because it's like, again, like here we go again. And it's not a matter of which one happens with more fluidity. It's about which one is plastered all over the TV screen. It's about which one is given all of this attention where the nation has to focus on these specific cases that distracts us from looking at the overall picture. Mm -hmm. Back in February, I gave a speech and I said that in a short game, you don't build an army with no intention of using it. The left did not produce Black Lives Matter for it to go unused and untapped. And in that speech, I said that this summer, when everything starts to fall out about Hillary, when her DOJ um, mm-hmm. decision comes out, when we start finding out what uh, the State Department is going to do about her use of emails, mm-hmm. that's when Black Lives Matter is going to start up. And just like clockwork, that's when they started up. This is used as a distraction for us not to see what is right in front of our eyes. They have normalized democratic socialism with Bernie Sanders. Mm. 
They have us calling, they have a segment of America calling for a revolution. Now, all they need to do is get a pretty face to replace Bernie Sanders. And now you have a democratic socialist being taken seriously in America with calls of a revolution. And these things are happening right before our eyes, but we get caught on each one of these single little cases instead of going straight forward and attacking and, and attacking the disease itself, which is progressivism. And and the progressivism, Sonny, which you speak about so eloquently. I didn't, the, the, the good of it is that you go around the country and you speak. The bad of it is that if you're in the listening audience right now and you've never heard her speak about this, I, I can't describe it to you. It's like an experience. So you've spoken about this and you called it. And I'm telling you, just like you said, I've been watching this past week. I actually live tweeted the Comey hearing when he went before uh, Congress. It was on C-SPAN. And I listened as he he reluctantly but effectively dismantled any doubt that any clear thinking person could ever have about whether or not Hillary Clinton is qualified to be president. He called her unsophisticated. He said she didn't possess the rudimentary knowledge to decipher between classified material and the markings that tell you it's classified. And he admitted that she lied under oath. Now, any in any other universe, 20 years ago, I dare say even 10 years ago, that would have been all the media, Democrats, Republicans, CNN, Fox. Everybody would have covered that because it was that groundbreaking. It was that big of a bombshell. She's the Democrat nominee. But instead, that happened, and within 24 hours, we have two police shootings. And like you said, these, these men's lives are important, but it's not a national story for a traffic stop to become a, a officer-involved shooting. These things happen 1,200 times a year. There are 1.1 million, or give or take, uh, police officers in the United States, billions of interactions. This is not a national story. Neither of those stories were. Hey, Sunny, welcome back to the show. All right. Good Hi. to be here. Okay. I, I, so there's so much that I want you to share. But first, I want to get this out of the way because I have a whole wall over here of information, uh, statistics, um, black on black crime, um, how many police officer involved shootings there are how many of the people who were shot were white how many of them were undetermined how many of them were while there was an attack in progress these are statistics that have been shared and shared and shared i've shared them um a lot of people deny them but i have a feeling that you have another way of approaching this conversation what is it that we should be talking about when we have basically it's a distraction and then also a tragedy with the, the shootings in in dallas most definitely a tragedy but one of the things that I try to focus on is better preparing the right to take on this fight because we have been losing the Democrats, especially in the black community, for the last 60 years. So the first, the first thing that we have to come to admit to ourselves is that progressivism is real. And it is, it, is, it is a disease, and it is a cancer, and it leads to death, poverty, and destruction. There is no way around it. Now, we, as the black community, were the guinea pigs. We were the test subjects, and I grew up. And this progressive nightmare. So I'm telling, I try to make sure conservatives understand, at the age of 18, I would have been out with Black Lives Matter because I knew something was wrong. You couldn't have, you couldn't have told me that my version of America that I grew up in was great because I would have laughed in your face. It wasn't great. It was drugs. It was poverty. It was broken families. It was no hope of going through schools and having teachers that passed you without challenging you. It, it is a dreary existence to come up and progressively control black America. Now, every black person does not have that experience. But I am telling you, as a person who does, it is cancerous. So take us as conservatives. You have a black person that comes to you and says, America doesn't want us to have anything. Immediately you pull out your stats. This stat, that stat, the other stat, which I tell Republicans is really funny how you can spend all this money together, all of these stats, but you can't actually spend that money 
putting economic empowerment into these communities, but you can spend the money studying the communities. But you know what I'm saying? I yeah. digress. No, you no, go- no, no. I, I'm letting you go because there's. This is a conversation we need to have, and I, I have people ask me often, and they are white conservatives, and they are dear, wonderful people. They're not asking out of a smart alecky or sarcasm. They genuinely want to know, how do we reach more blacks with our message of prosperity, of individual liberty? How do we reach them? And I always feel like, well, I know how it would sound to me, but I'm already over here. How do you get into the mind of a person who, as you said, they're coming from a place that America isn't the greatest place on earth. They haven't had the same opportunity. And so I, this is exactly what we need to hear because there are people in our lives, Sonny, who we need to know how to talk this talk to. We need to be able to give them this message. And if we give it wrong... And don't tell them they're making it up. Like, okay, we as conservatives, we know what Saul Alinsky's plans were. We know what Bernadine Doyle and Bill Ayers, what their plan were. We know what Cloward and Piven were. We know that the progressive um, hierarchy within college system has been planning for this. What are we going towards? We are progressing towards something. And what we need to do is to interact and cut off any more interference of this progressive hand dealing in the black community. But that starts with us changing our arguments and how we approach these people. And so we go for the stats because that's what conservatives do. We know numbers. We don't know hearts. So we start giving them the stats. And then we end it with, if you just graduate high school and and don't have a kid until then, then you won't give it, then you won't um, be in poverty. In poverty. Mm-hmm. Okay, I say that all so the let's time. let's look at the high school. The high school is progressively run. It's telling them that the government's job is to take care of them. It's telling them that black men are disrespected and hated and devalued in America because that's the progressive agenda. That's what they're getting out of the school. They're getting all the touchy, all the feely, all the BS that liberals try to do with their um, social engineering. They're not getting the math. They're not getting the science. They're not getting the um, the uh, economic lessons. They're not getting the basic things that they need to be successful in America. And our answer to them is to go back to the poison that gave you the cancer in the first place. We tell them, just go to school and finish school and you'll be great. Well, they go to school and the teachers pass them without actually caring if they could read or write because then they could collect a federal budget uh, bonus. Mm-hmm. And then they go to colleges where the teachers give them safe space and teach them how to be neutered little brats. Our answer to their problem is to send them back to the poison that started the cancer. And if we cannot even see that the way we're arguing this, because we refuse to validate their feelings, if we can validate their feelings, then we can point to who caused it. So you want to tell me about your ghetto? Well, guess who herded you into ghetto? It wasn't Republicans. It was Democrats. And they still control it. But we would rather say, no, America is great. Your ghetto is great. No, it is a horrible existence. It is a terrible place to live. But progressives put you there on purpose. They and put keep you there them there by design. And keep them there by design. And because keep you there once by you're design. out in the suburbs living your life and paying a little bit in tax, earning some money and paying some tax on that, driving a nice car and paying some tax on that, uh, you're going to start to think a little bit differently about whether or not you need the government to be so heavily involved in everything that you do. And progressives know that. That's why it doesn't make any sense for them to let the kids in the inner cities have school choice. Because with school choice comes a better education, which means you might move out of the inner city and actually start enjoying your life, and you won't need the Democrats. So well, Okay, so even with school choice, okay, so... We get argument and pushback from the left about school choice, right? Mm-hmm. And, and we know why we get it, because of unions, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. But here's our argument, right? Simply put, you can have your black lives not at school. Like, since, since black kids are so mistreated in public education, you can hire D. Ray as professor of everything, put a little Black Lives Matter school in the middle of every predominantly black city, and educate your little Black Lives Matter students in that little Black Lives Matter school. You have that freedom to do that under school choice. And then it also works as well with the 
the LGBT community. Build a school specially fit for them that's tailored and triggered, especially to deal with the problems that they deal with. So all, look at all of the problems we can solve with just by going with school choice. But they're not going to do it. And in the end, we can also say that the same ones of us, the same of us, the same ones will understand that still sharpens still. We won't segregate our kids because we want our kids to go up against the best so that they can become the best. But this also challenges black parents to understand and to see that just because where you brought your child into the world doesn't limit them, that you can send them to a great school and be challenged by people that have privilege and still come out on top because of just your work ethic. So we have the ability to shut Black Lives Matter up, shut the left up, shut the progressives up, and at the same time, show Black America what results look like, what it looks like to graduate kids who are fully aware of what's going on in the world, ready to tackle it, ready to be entrepreneurs, ready not just to become lawyers. How many lawyers do we have to, to come in and take <laughs> over the medical field in new ways that were never imagined before? We've done all of this before in this country. Black America has been great in America before. We have done it before. And the sad part about it is, that is Republican history. And it's so sad that I have to teach Republicans their own history. Because if I can teach Republicans their history only using black people, only using black names, only using black faces, because that's how integrated we were. So that's that's where we that's where we leave it on all on the table instead of picking up everything we've got and making the case. We're not we're not telling them exactly what it is we're trying to sell when we're talking about Republican ideals. So we're, we're getting close to the end of the segment and I'm going to have Ali on next and we're going to continue this conversation. But uh, well, first of all, how can people find you? Where can where can my listeners find out more about you and listen and, and watch your videos and everything? At Sonny Johnson, that's S-O-N-N-I-E Johnson. And, of course, on Breitbart, you can find a link to my podcast. Did she say that? We have a lot of fun on there, so you can find me there. Yes, and she has a lot of really interesting guests, not just from the political sphere, but from entertainment and from um, just the other parts of our existence, the culture. They they talk about that a lot, too. Um, and, and honestly, you have to go to Breitbart just so you can see some of her work on there that... It's just a whole lot of work she's been doing over there. So y'all should just get on over there and spend some of your time. It's Sunday night. What have you got better to do but listen to me and find out more about Sunny at Sunny Johnson on Twitter. Um, I've already tweeted her, so you can find it at Stacey on the right as well. Thank you so much, hon, for coming on and for sharing everything. And um, let's, let's talk soon. Of course. God bless America, people. Stay tight. All right. All right. Bye. Get more at 971talk.com.